Hello and welcome to the Drexel Interview. I'm your host, Paula Morantz Cohen, and today I'm pleased to have as my guest Cardinal Justin Francis Regali, Archbishop of Philadelphia. Cardinal Regali is the spiritual leader of almost one and a half million Catholics in the Philadelphia region. He was named Archbishop of Philadelphia in 2003 by Pope John Paul II. Two weeks after his installation as Archbishop, the Pope formally created him a Cardinal. He served the church in a number of important diplomatic roles, among them as English language translator for Pope Paul VI. Your Eminence, Cardinal Regali, welcome to the Drexel interview. Thank you, Paula. It's a joy to be with you. Well, um, I wonder, there's a lot for us to talk about, and I'm very pleased to have you here today. I want to start by talking about your background. Um, you were born in California. You went to the seminary there. Um, could you tell us first about what called you to the priesthood? What was it that made you decide to become a priest? Well, you know, it was many years ago I, I had this thought that perhaps this vocation to the priesthood that I had seen exemplified in some other priests. I had seen it exemplified in a very joyful way, and they seemed to be very fulfilled. So I thought perhaps that was for me. So that was the origin of my uh, interest in the priesthood. Then I went to the seminary, and of course when you go you don't have a complete idea, but as the years go on you have the opportunity to have a greater understanding and to ratify your decision and to be more sure of the fact that this is your calling. So I think that happened in my case. Were there members of your family that inspired you that had been in the church? Well actually I have a brother a priest, but at the time he was, he was not a priest, so... Mm -hmm. So you inspired him? No, he was older than I am. <laughs> he, he was actually uh, in the seminary before I was, but a different seminary. He was, he was a Jesuit. Okay. And uh, then I, I, I have a sister that is a sister, but um, also I have many, many nephews and nieces from other brothers. Okay. So you have quite a, a large family then? Yes, I think uh, nephews and nieces... I have 25 plus 50 grandnephews and nieces plus uh, it's five or six now great grandnephews and nieces, so it's over 80. Oh my uh, gosh. At the present moment. Well, that's wonderful. Um, you earned your doctorate in canon law, and yes. then you went on um, to uh, study at the Vatican uh, uh, translation. Is that right? At this, in the secretariat of the uh, of the Vatican? Well, I was involved in, in translating for the Pope, yes. You were translating, uh, yeah. And I, I wonder how you, you made the transition from pastoral service into diplomatic service. Well, actually, when I was ordained a priest in mm -hmm. Los Angeles, I was sent to Rome in order to pursue uh, further studies in canon law. And it was there in Rome, while I was in the Gregorian University in these canon law studies, that the Second Vatican Council took place. Mm. And I was minding my own business. And actually, during the Second Vatican Council, there was a request from all the bishops of the world to make sure that there were more non-Italians in the Curia in Rome. There had always been other people, non-Italians, but they just wanted a, a greater percentage. So I happened to be in Rome at the time, and they were looking for a couple of Americans at that moment. I was there and I was asked if I would study for service to the Vatican and then go into the Vatican service. So that's how it happened. I was simply minding my own business and ended up in the So service. it was serendipity in a way, it was a yes. chance. Um, now this business of, well you were an American, but I, I assume you, you speak Italian. I, I do, because I, I was there for 30 years and uh, it was, I was working at that time in the English language department of the Pope's Secretariat. And at, at that time, I was employed as the translator for Pope Paul VI. He spoke English, but he preferred to speak Italian. So I would be with him when he would have audiences with people from all over the world in English, 
mm -hmm. the uh, President Ford would be with the Pope, and, and I was there with him, and the Secretary of State, many, many people who came from all over the English-speaking world. So that was part of my role for some of the years that I was That in must have been enormously exciting. So you were involved with these negotiations and discussions with all manner of international figures. Yes, yes, with all, all manner of international figures, some of them extremely uh, notable, some of them a bit strange. And uh, Can you tell us some stories that are, are memorable of that period? Well, uh, for example, I, I remember the uh, the, the day that the, the pre President Ford was there, for example, the first 15 minutes of the conversation, it was uh, simply the Pope and the President, but uh, I was present also as the Pope's translator. And then after the first 15 minutes, then the, the Secretary of State was admitted, mm. both the Secretary of State of the Vatican and of the United States. And so there, there were many, many like this. We had various people that, that came, and the Pope was always, uh, sometimes these people were friendly, sometimes they weren't friendly, but he was always, uh, he always treated people with great respect and always wanted to obtain from them any possibility of improving the condition of the people in their jurisdiction. For example, I was with him when he saw this very controversial man, Idi Amin, Yes. from Uganda, and uh, people like that, the emperor of Ethiopia, the uh, uh, presidents from all over the world, some of them who later on were assassinated. But one after another, they all came to visit the Pope, and so I was very privileged. And at the same time, I was with him as he would visit with the bishops of the church and with the great ecumenical leaders of the church, with the Archbishop of Canterbury, mm. for example. And, and uh, so, so that, that did was you travel with him as well, or was this all in Rome? Well, the, in the first stage of my, I worked for Pope Paul VI mm -hmm. for the last eight and a half years of his life until he died in 1978. And I was with him in his private audiences, and I did travel with him uh, on a very long journey throughout Asia. We went to, we went to, Iran, we went to uh, Sri Lanka, we went to the Philippines, we went to Australia, we went to Hong Kong, we went to uh, the, uh, the islands, uh, we went to Indonesia, and all of that. But that was, that was with Paul VI. Then later on, I was with Pope John Paul I for just 33 days. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I was the last person to go out of his room the, the day he died, to go out really? of his office in the morning. And then Pope John Paul II came along, and I was with him. I was with him for the next uh, uh, 16 years or so until I left Rome. And with Pope John Paul II, then I started to travel seriously uh, all the time. We came to the United States in 1979, we went to Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, Australia, Papua New Guinea, the Fiji Islands, all throughout, all throughout Africa, all throughout uh, Asia, Japan. How fascinating and, uh, that must so have been. So it, it was extremely fascinating, and it uh, gave me an opportunity to see these places that, which I would never have, never have seen if it were not for the Pope. And Did you feel ever that the Pope was in danger or that these were... Um, these were very challenging circumstances under which you were traveling in some cases? Well, actually, actually there, uh, there was some kind of a scare that took place in one of the Asian countries. However, it was under control. But I was, I was with Pope Paul VI at the moment in Manila, way back in 1970, mm. when someone dis the, who was disguised as a priest got right up next to him with a dagger, and he was stopped at the last moment. Then I You were was, right there. I was right there. Mm. I was part of his, of his team. And uh, then years later, in 1981, I was right there in St. Peter's Square when uh, the Pope was shot, uh, oh, when Pope John Paul II was shot. Yeah. So what was the date of that now? It was May the 13th, 
1981. Okay. And uh, the Pope was coming into St. Peter's Square, as he always did every Wednesday, and he was driving in an open car through the St. Peter's Square, through the crowds, and as he approached, as he was getting closer to the front where the, the audience was going to take place, it was at that moment that uh, this man shot him. There must have been a huge panic and uproar. And how, 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 what did it feel like to be there? Well, it, it was not a panic nor an uproar, but the people, everyone was shocked. Mm. And there was this profound silence that, that took place. And the Pope was in, in this open car, uh, open Jeep-like, and um, so that took off immediately into the Vatican he was transferred to an ambulance and then taken to to the hospital, operated on immediately, and with God's help, he was he, he was saved. Yeah, I, I I recall now that there was tremendous upset and 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 uh, grieving at the time that that happened and fear that he would uh, it would be a mortal wound. There was a, a woman that was very close to him when he was shot, an American woman, hmm. and. The, one of the bullets, I think the one that hit his finger, hit her. So uh, later on, a after, afterwards, I was sent by the Vatican to express, while she was still in the hospital, to express to her the Pope's condolences because he was asking from his bed in the hospital, he was asking how this woman mm -hmm. was doing who had been shot with actually the same bullet, one of the same bullets. Now, you have then worked with three popes, and I, I assume you know somewhat a fourth, um, yeah. Pope Benedict now. Yes. Um, could you talk a little bit about differences in style, personality, uh, of a character of these four people that you've known? Well, they, you're right. I mean, they, each one is a different person, different way to express himself, etc. There, there's many, many traits in common, and one is, of course, the, there's this great continuity in what they stand for. And uh, just just take the the question, for example, of human rights, and how strong all of those people have been. Well, actually, I yes, I, I worked for three popes, but I was in Rome for four. Because, and now Pope Benedict uh, is the fifth. I was there also for Pope John the Twenty Third. Really? So, although I didn't work for him, uh, I you was. You knew the, him? No, no, I didn't know him, but I was there in Saint Peter's Square at the very moment that he died. Really? I, I was there when they announced it. I was there in Saint Peter's Square when uh, Pope Paul the Sixth was elected. I was in Saint Peter's Square when John Paul the First was elected. I was up on the balcony. I was there when John Paul II was elected. It was a great uh, coincidence. I was there when John Paul II was shot. And of course I was there when Benedict was elected because I was one of the cardinals mm -hmm. that was privileged to participate. So all of them have uh, different personalities. But they, all of them have a, great, uh, they have, they have a great sense of compassion. If I could tell you about uh, Pope Paul VI, for example. Uh, one time I, I was with him it was 30 years ago, it was 1977, and he called me to discuss something with him in English that he wanted to make sure he understood correctly. And at the end of the meeting, I was going out, just the two of us, and he stopped me and he said, how is Paul? Paul was my brother. Mm -hmm. And I had told him, I'd asked him sometime before to pray for my brother Paul, who was a young man, he was just turning 51, he had 12 children, and he was dying of cancer. Mm -hmm. And the Pope had four questions. How is Paul? How is his wife holding up under the circumstances? How are all the children doing? And what can I do? Really? So it was, it, but that's just one example of, of compassion. And, and then over and over again, I saw that with Pope John Paul II as we traveled throughout the world as he met with hundreds of thousands of people, with, with thousands of people who were sick, with the, with the 
deformed